It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party. It's the 202. It's the 202. Hello, everyone. Coming up on the 202, he was dripping in finesse and loads of talent as he performed all the way to the finals on NBC's The Voice. Foon Show, yeah, <laughs> he's here with us today. And dropping by just to say, hey, is former Redskins cornerback Fred Smoot. We'll see what he's been up to lately. And of course, our resident DJ, Dirty Rico, has a little bit of that extra finesse of his own. He's spinning with us on today's show. <laughs> What's happening, Hi. man? Hey, everything's good. Take your play. It Talk about like finesse. You're dripping. What, what is that on your hands? What does the tattoo say? Oh, well, see, it says noise maker on my hands. Oh, so you even got you that want? on your hands. Definitely. All day long. And the ring. And the ring is my ring, life. Man, you yes. beat, you beat I, me. Hey, man, the lion <laughs> got to go ahead and kind of like tie it all in. Oh, <laughs> Look, lion like on your shirt there. Yes. Yeah, I've been trying to keep up with a little, little finesse. And I like that. I got that from you. <laughs> hey, man, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't wear the sparkle yes, shirt? Yes, I would. I'm talking about Furman with the jackets. I've been trying to keep up. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm gone, I think you both can keep up with each, <laughs> other, with each other. All the way from childhood to the stages of NBC's The Voice, Nigerian-born vocalist Foon Show has been hitting all the right notes. In fact, in blind auditions on The Voice, Foon Show's rendition of Finesse by Bruno Mars made Adam Levine, Kelly Clarkson, and Jennifer Hudson all spin around in their chairs. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Foon Show. Oh, Ed, she likes to keep me wet, but girl, you know it ain't fair, the way you're just standing there, nothing but makeup on, and I've been waiting so long, yeah, the feeling so strong, yeah, the feeling so strong, I, I hope I ain't moving too quick. I don't mind waiting for it, but keep it real, girl, are you going to love me tonight? If not, it's cool, girl, we can just vibe, but I can't lie, you know it's on my mind, and you can always ride shotgun in my ride, we can go faster than the speed of light, girl, you all right, you all right, you all right with me, persuasion, she succumbed to the persuasion, and it ain't nothing I'm saying It's just the way my mama made me We can go to my place or your place What you say Whoa, I've been thinking We can make something of this feeling Cause girl, you know it ain't fair The way you're just standing there With nothing but losing fun I've been waiting so long yeah, the feeling so strong. Yeah, the feeling so strong. I, I hope I ain't moving too quick. I don't mind waiting for it. But keep it real, girl. Are you gonna love me tonight? If not, it's cool, girl. We can just vibe. But I can't lie, you know it's on my mind. And you can always ride shotgun in my ride. And we can go faster. Pour you up a glass of wine I got something you can like Yeah, well, it's all right Cause we meant to start a fight Don't nobody put it out Yeah, it's meant to start a fight It's all right yeah. Cause it's meant to start a fight now, you know, we have nothing but big love for current and former Redskins stars right here on the 202 all the time. That's right. You may not want to know about the big love 
uh, between <laughs> me and this next guy. We go back many years. I think I shot my shot or he shot his shot. Um, he's a Hall of Famer, destined to be, and he is such a personality. Please welcome Fred Smoot. <laughs> How you doing, man? Thanks. Hey, Smoothie. Smoothie, okay, who shot their shot? Was it me? Was it you? Well, I missed. I'm not a good free throw shooter, but I shot a three point and didn't go in. I don't think I was ready. Well, I, don't think I, was, I, ready. I was young. I had got here like, I was probably, what, 20 years old at the time wow. when I got here? Wow. I was like, yeah, she's gorgeous. I'm going to have to ask her on the date. And she said, no, politely. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been taking care of me. We've been friends for many years, and I appreciate you. Well, you know this. I'm not a quitter. That's right. You're not. <laughs> That's right. You're a winner on and off the field. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. How, how many years removed from being uh, on the... I got here in 2001. And All right, I retired in, at the end of 2010, beginning of 2011. So it's almost been like wow. seven, eight years now. Oh. It, like time flies. People don't understand how fast a a career can go by. Cause I think yeah. people they remember you. They they get to watch us grow up. That's the thing about yeah. sports. Like that's why you attach to certain athletes. Y'all watch us in college while we 18, 19, 20. Then you watch us in the league. Then you watch us hit our 30s. And now we in our 40s. You know the one thing about football. She fickle. She'll quit you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, you don't look in your 40s. I gotta say that. Hey, I gotta thank my mom and my dad for that, right? Yeah. yeah. But you take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. Well, I think it's, it's natural when you grow up in a sport that it demands that you, you're only going to be as good as your body lets you to be. So once you're in that sport and you're in that life, you continue to take care of your body after sports too. And it kind of trickles down in your family also. And now in 2018, everybody kind of health conscious. Like even my boy and my son, he's like, nah, I can't drink that real milk. I want almond milk. Are so you serious? <laughs> that, that's, that's the day and time we're in wow. right now. Yeah. Now, Smoot, you're such a personality. And growing up, you know, the girls, we would have our brush we would sing into yeah. the, in the mirror. Yeah. What did you do in the mirror? Because <laughs> you, you do a lot of radio. Yeah. You, again, everybody wants you on their television shows. What were you doing that let you know you could do that? Well, I think what my grandma said I talk a lot because I was the only child. So I was always oh. by myself. I had to play by myself. I had to do stuff. She said, yeah, that's why you talk so much, because when you get around people, <laughs> it brings the energy out. You, you, yeah. you, you, all, you say what you always wanted to say. So I was just one of those people, man. I, I think if you're going to live one time, I need to get what I want to say out before I die. Ooh, and can you say that again? <laughs> and, 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 and most people, like, they, they hold it in. And the only thing I do, I say what people are actually thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, and I try to put a filter on there. Most times it's not a filter on there, but I try to keep a filter on it. Wow. Yeah. Well, the main thing we've been dying to know is what you've been up to lately. Well, I'm always going to be up to something. I, I, I believe in that. I, I just think the one thing I tell people, when you go from the twilight from playing to retire, you got to realize you're retiring in your early 30s. Yeah. All right? You're still young. It's so yes. much life to live. So you have to literally push the reset button, and then you got to look in that mirror and say, who am I? Uh, what do I like? For, one, for the first time in your life, that football don't define you. Now it's like, all right, what do Fred Smooth like? Well, I like to talk. All right, so, <laughs> so, so guess what? TV and radio was perfect. And I had to start to lay those seeds while I was playing. Yeah. That's why I always, anytime the media asked me to do something, I was always there. I was always going to be a part of it because I knew it was going to be, you know, after football, these are the things I want to do. And, of course, uh, other parts of entertainment. Like, I like to write shows. And luckily now uh, I'm working for Kathy Hughes over there. You're so, writing uh, smooth. Oh, yeah, I write. <laughs> hey, it, uh, crazy things go on in his mind, oh my. and now you put the paper Whoa. to the pen and then you let a couple of people read and they're like, yeah, man, I want to I want to I want to see this. I want to I want to see it on the screen. So, yeah, now I'm writing a couple show plots. Is and this stuff dramatic like stuff, comedic stuff? Uh, oh, it, most definitely some comedic <laughs> stuff. Like, I like to laugh. Oh. I think it's soul food. It's, I, it keeps you young. Like, if you yes, look at people yes. that laugh a lot, they, 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 they have a young demeanor and, they, and they're uh, naturally more happier. So, of course, it's going to be some coming in there. Of course, it's going to be some other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some trash stuff. <laughs> no, hey, listen to it. It's going to be some life stories. That's how shows are. Yeah. They yeah, life yeah. stories. And how, how far can you push the story is what everybody want to know. Right. Wow. Man. Man, can, you have to come yeah. back again. I love your yeah, I, energy. I should be staying in here. Why? Well, I shouldn't even have to leave. You know what Can saying? we create something for him, for <laughs> this guy? Yeah. Wow. wow. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, Appreciate thank y'all. Thank y'all. All right. Thank Coming you. up, we'll hear more from Foon Show a little later in the show. But first, could there be an angel in the kitchen? Ah, that's a yes. His name is Angel Barreto, and we're going to chat him up at the 202 Chef's Table when we come back. Stay there. Oh,
202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. Welcome back to the 202 as we continue to explore the taste and talent of DC's culinary scene. Joining us at the chef's table today is Chef Angel Beretta from Anjou Restaurant. Hi, and you chef. know, this is our favorite part of the show. How yes. you doing, man? Everyone loves food, right? Everyone oh, who doesn't? Loves food. We love yeah. the tasting. And we love when you have such an array of different things, you know? That's the great thing about Korean food. It's just so vibrant and different. The textures, the flavors. Everything about it. That's why I love cooking Korean food. So I'm happy to cook a dish for you guys today. Oh, well, you're love an it. angel just for bringing fresh oh. beef in here. <laughs> and it's only the best, too. So we have prime filet. I see. Prime filet. We have filet. New York strip. So we're wow. going to make a Korean dish called yuko. yuko. Yuko is Korean beef tartare. So wow. what we have here is. Wait, prime wait first, filet. what are these pinwheel things here? Oh, so this is lotus root. Mm. So lotus root is uh, like the lotus plants, the tuber at the bottom yeah, of yeah. it. So they clean it, we peel it slice it very thinly and we fry it and it makes a fantastic chip or a vessel for anything. Wow. wow. So that's going to be our vessel to serve our tartare with very today. Very interesting. Yeah. Let us let you get busy. Yeah. We'll talk All right. while so you're, like I said, we have prime filet okay. and New York strip. We're mm -hmm. using these two pieces because they're super tender and you're not going to be like chewing really hard. Mm -hmm. And also these are the best cuts you can get of steak. Oh yeah. Oh. All right. So prime. Remember that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so prime filet in New York. We have some spicy and sweet uh, candied basil seeds, mm. some frozen Asian pears. This is pears. yuko dressing. Yuko what? dressing is sesame oil, garlic, ginger, and that's going to be the base. Some fried garlic, some cured egg yolks. Cured egg yolks. Cured egg yolks. Okay. So we take uh, the egg yolk, submerge it in salt, sugar, and gochugaru. Gochugaru is a Korean chili flake. It's super mild, not very spicy but it gives you just a little bit of a kick. Okay. Say that again, uh -huh. though. Uh, pronounce that again. Gochugaru. 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 Yeah. Okay. Go Gochugaru. You got it. Look at you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have some more of that gochugaru in our salt that we're going to use to season everything with. So okay. that's salt, gochugaru, uh, and toasted sesame seeds, some scallions, toasted pine nuts. All right. All right. Let's All right. Go. So let's assemble. Let's watch. Yes. All right. So All I'm right. going to take so a little bit of the beef. A little bit of the beef. Because that's the most important part. You can't make tartare without the meat, right? All right. All right. So. I'm going to take right. some of this yuko dressing. Okay. All right. And again, this is just mm. sesame, garlic, sugar. Mm. That's going to give it a little bit of nuttiness, a little mm. bit of sweetness. Wow. Some Asian pear. So mm. we yeah. freeze the Asian pear because it's going to give you some additional texture into the tartare. Mm. Fried garlic. Again, that's flavor and texture we're adding into this dish. But uh, frying the garlic, you chop it up and fry it with butter and or just regular oil. Regular you can't oil. Really, yeah, you, regular oil. Yeah. Start it low and then bring it up to a uh, simmer. Yeah. And as it simmers, it starts to get a little bit crispy. As it yeah. starts to brown slowly, you want to take it off the heat and strain it, and you have perfect fried garlic. And this will last in your kitchen about a week or two. Yeah. So you can uh. use this on anything. If you like salads, anything, fried garlic is awesome. All right. You want me to go through all this? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to add some scallions into this. Yeah. A little bit of that salt I was talking about mm -hmm. with the gochugaru and everything in there. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we're just going to toss it. Oh. So it's, you get a lot of oh, colors the, and some the aromas bright, too, I love it. Bright yeah. and vibrant. Oh yeah. Uh, so this is our take. Anju is going to be a modern Korean restaurant specializing in Korean influenced cocktails and innovative bar food. Ooh. So this is our take on merging the traditional and the modern together, honoring the old with the new. So that's our stuff with Anju. Oh, fantastic. All right. So I'm gonna take a little of this tartare, put this on there. All right. On top of this lotus root that we just fried at like 375, so it's nice and crispy. Make wow. the perfect bag of chips, right? Oh, and yeah. they last, the great thing about lotus root too, they're so sturdy. They last for three, four days, which is really, really nice. What's so the chef, flavor before adding anything to the To the lotus, lotus root? Chips, yeah. It's very neutral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're like a potato, potato chip person or you like texture and crunch, this is a super nice alternative to have something healthy. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's really great. So, Chef, do you work with some of the other chefs in town? Are there any that I do? You so, I'm a member of. Admire? It's called the Fried Rice Collective. So, I work with. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Fried Rice Collective. I love that. Yeah. You so guys have merch. We do. Of course, we do. <laughs> 
Yeah. I want a T-shirt. I like so, that. We're, yeah. I'm under the umbrella group of Fried Rice Collective, so we have a restaurant called Chaiko. Chaiko is Chinese and Korean. Oh, we know Chaiko. So you know we Scott. We love you know Chaiko. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're awesome guys. So I work with those guys hand in hand. Oh. And so we're getting ready to open Anju. They're with me every step of the process. So, so you're in those planning mm. stages. Yeah, and I've been in this D.C. for cooking for past seven years. I was at The Source by Wolfgang Puck for oh, yeah. six years. I was like their sous chef there. Uh, so I know a lot of the chefs. I, I interact with them. So it's great camaraderie in D.C. That's the one great thing I love about D.C. All the chefs get along. We're great yeah. friends. We, we talk, like that too. We hang out. When you travel other places, you don't get that. Sure. Only in D.C. you get That's that, right. which don't is awesome. And yeah. those after-hours meetings oh, where yeah. if the chef let you in and you guys are just hanging out, eating, I love that. So yeah. at our restaurant, we're going to be doing some of those like late-night pop-ups. Really? So we'll be doing Anju After Dark. So we'll bring in guest chefs from around the city. Oh, I love spotlight that. Spotlight them, like let them the cook. We'll do yeah. some modern food. I'll be there cheering yeah. you guys on and tasting. So it'll be lots of fun. <laughs> All wow. right. All right. So we're going to finish this tartare off with a little bit of toasted pine nuts. Yep on top, mm -hmm. again that's texture and flavor, and then that cured egg yolk I was talking about, that's gonna go on top. Oh. And so I'm just using like a microplane. Um, like lemon zest or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You got egg zest, egg yolk, <laughs> egg yolk zest. So that's gonna go on top. Uh, that looks our, lovely. That's our Yuko. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that's how we make it. Nice. All right, Furman. Oh, okay, so I guess I'm supposed to do my thing, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Let You're me. the family taster. Okay, all right. <laughs> so all this food is in Korea, especially prepared oh. with alcohol normally. Everything's Delicious. paired with alcohol. That's oh, it is? Anju means in is. Korean. Oh, As wow. you can see, I'm yeah. <laughs> going at it. Awesome. This you gotta delicious. try it, yeah. I had to get him. And I love the crunchiness. Okay. Yeah, so it's like flavors and textures, everything mm -hmm. kind of layered in ones. Yeah. That's so. awesome. That's what we're going to be kind of doing at Anju. So nice to meet you. Likewise. It's a pleasure to meet you. And I so can't much. wait to visit your restaurant when it oh, opens. Definitely come by. Like I said, we're a modern Korean restaurant specializing in modern food with Korean style cocktails. We'll have a great bar downstairs. Upstairs, we'll have two family style tables. We'll be doing a dish called Jonggul. It is uh, large format Korean soups. Upstairs, we'll do full service in the restaurant also. So, awesome. all right, looking forward definitely to come it. Come by. Oh, Thanks are. so much. Yeah. When we come back, <clears throat> more from NBC, The Voice Talent. Funjo. And ever wonder how some of the most prominent women in politics, business, and entertainment get that stylish image? Guess what? Many have the help of a professional stylist. But don't worry, we've got you covered with some expert advice from our resident image maker. Here's a little extra style with Michelle Lopez. the process of me styling a client is not only to make sure that they look good in their clothes, but that they look good. Their hair, their makeup, everything is done. And so there's always a glam squad. So in this case, this is Charlene Brown and her glam squad. And I brought clothes for Michelle Wright so that we can get ready for this event tonight. One of the things that I do when I'm styling is to make sure that the clothes fit the personality. So Michelle Wright's personality, as she's been on radio and media, she's a mogul, she's done this for years, is really funky and sassy. And so one of the things that I brought for her today was this fur vest. So, Shell, what you think? Ooh. Look, you like it? Do you see? You want the client to feel at their best. When you feel at your best, you perform at 150%. And because she is a creative and I look at her as an artist, when artists feel their best, they go out and they do their thing and they do it on a higher level. <laughs> So you saw what I selected for Miss Michelle Wright for our event this evening, but this is what I selected for myself, and here's why. Because this is one of the colors of the season, that's the first thing, it is chartreuse, but not just that. Knowing me and knowing my personality, I'm very spicy, spunky, outgoing, and so again, my clothes tell a story. So what I want for you all is not to be afraid to try new things, to showcase who you are. So I'm ready for tonight and I'm ready for the turn up. Okay, my work is done. And this is what I was talking about, Miss Michelle Wright, all funky and fabulous, ready to go. This is part of her personality and I'm in my chartreuse and I am fly and fierce and this is just a little extra style with Michelle Lopez.
It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. Welcome back to the 202. Furman and I are with our talented buddy, Funsho. That's right. And now, as you know, he's apparently been nicknamed Funsho the Voice. <laughs> how, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I love it. I'm yeah. flattered. <laughs> so your life had to has, have changed since you've been on The Voice. Tell us how it's changed. It's changed a lot. You know, I'm a lot more busy. You know, I'm doing music full time now. Uh, oh. Yeah, I get to travel. You know, I, I was in Nigeria recently opening for Wande Cole. And uh, I get to hang out with cool people like you guys. So. <laughs> that must have been like a homecoming for you. People like, oh. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. That was my first time back in 22 years. So. Are you serious? Is that right? Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was the, the thing that you learned from doing The Voice? Um, I, I guess as a performer, is really just like having the full package and really just putting all of yourself into a performance, like more than just the vocals, but just like really selling the performance. So I think that was probably my biggest takeaway from that because a lot of it is, it's TV, you know, so you gotta, you gotta make a show, visual yeah. and audio, you know. Man, I mean, I love seeing you with the guitar up there and, yeah. you know, selling it. Right, that was fun yeah. for me. That was, I, I'm glad I got to do the, uh, the guitar thing on there. Yeah. yeah. So did the experience kind of um, inspire you with your writing? Because I know you write a lot and you do a lot of original music. Did that inspire you to write something? Yeah, for sure. Um, I have the song that actually just came out uh, recently, it's called uh, Legends for Life, which was really inspired oh. by my experience leading up to The Voice and on The Voice and just kind of how my life has changed and just feeling fulfilled and feeling accomplished in this moment right now. And so that's what, what we're, we're grateful for is that you gave Michelle and I a chance to come in and, and see you rehearse and record yeah. uh, in a recording session. That was, that was nice and the song was terrific. Thank you. I was happy yeah. to have you guys. So we're dying to hear it. So if uh, you'll you'll play it for us, we love it. Of course. All right. Performer. Phone show. Keep praying, but it's all about the timing. I don't really care if they like me. Spread love, don't nobody wanna fight me. Since she never met nobody quite like me. Since she gotta have it like Spike Lee. We can ride through the day and kick it 90. Yeah, ride through the city, girl, I got the key. When I smile, I got white teeth, and they feeling me. Cause I'm about to get a hundred G's and a white bean. It's hard to be humble when you're way up, way up, way up, way up. Gotta make them pay up, pay up. Cause I'm feeling myself, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yeah, I'm feeling myself, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yeah. Feeling myself, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yeah, I'm feeling myself, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yeah. Never gonna die. We live in the sky, way too high. Took us some time. Now we legends for life, way too high. Never gonna die. We live in the sky, way too high. Now we legends for life, way too high Ooh, it's your time, baby Are you living your life, baby? Ooh, you wanna shine, baby Yeah, sometimes you know you gotta pick up yourself in your mind, baby Yeah, you're gonna have doubts sometimes But is it justified? Are you living or are you just alive and hiding your light inside your mind? No my dog's gonna rise You can hit me on my cell phone line When the times get rough Or when you need some love I whip my heart on my sleeve Yeah, I'm feeling myself, don't mind me, don't mind me, yeah. Feeling myself, don't mind me, don't mind me. Feeling myself, don't mind me, don't mind me, yeah. Never gonna die, we live in the sky, way too high. Took us some time, now we legends for life, way too high. Never gonna die, we live in the sky, way too high. Took us some time, now we legends for life, way too high. Oh, 
show. Some songs stick in your head. I'm going to be singing way too high up <laughs> over and over and over again. Shout Thank out to your DJ. Yeah, shout out to <laughs> Jeremiah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremiah. You know I love Jeremiah. <laughs> he made yeah. me a shirt before, so I like it. Yeah, he's <laughs> a great dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, I'm going to be singing that song. Going to be all singing right. that song. Well, thanks to all of our guests today and, of course, to my co-host, Michelle Wright. And thanks to DJ Dirty Rico and to all of you for watching all of us. Furman and I will see you again next time on The 202. Don't forget, check out episodes of The 202 on DC Radio 96.3 HD4 and dcradio.gov. This is how we do when we party uh, in the 202. Yeah. Hey. Home of that good live music. Come on. Live on set, live audience approves it. Uh. The best hopes that don't get no tighter. Yeah. Furman and Michelle can't get, get no right up. Taxation, no representation. No. But the 202 repping for the capital nation. <laughs> so from 703 to the 301. Yeah. yeah, we all come to have some fun. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party in the 202. Yeah. It's the 202. Yeah. This the 202. This the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party it's in the, the 202. It's the 202. Uh. It's the 202.